Hello welcome friend, my name is Annika and today we're doing another cheap art supply challenge and this time I'm going to use Jessa's Art Games. It's an app designed by Josiah Jessa Brooks uh, from Draw with Jessa. He has a YouTube channel that I think most of you already know about but if you haven't heard of him before I suggest that you check him out because he has a lot of great content a lot of uh, tutorials and uh, cool design drawing things. Uh, yeah, he's a really cool guy, so I really do uh, suggest that you check it out. And this app was made by him and his friend Robert. And yeah, so I am going to use some of these materials. I might not use everyone, but this is what I have. Uh, I used the watercolors in my last challenge along with the colored pencils. Uh, so this time I'm going to focus on using the fiber pens uh, and these are water-based um, tends to chew on paper and is something I really don't enjoy working with but I'm going to give them a try and uh, I also uh, going to use the crayons um, so uh, but I'm go might use these if needed and we're going to sketch with the IKEA pen again uh, one of those free things um, that you can take home with you and I might also use a, a ballpoint pen if needed and we have an eraser and this time I'm going to use regular uh, computer paper uh, to draw on. Last time we used um, the back side of a cereal box, but this time I'm going to use uh, uh, computer paper just to show you what you can do. You can also uh, use back side of en envelopes and other things, uh, cardboard. Yeah, but for this one I'm going to use my computer paper and uh, yeah, so let's play the game. Uh, I haven't really used it that much yet, uh, but I really like uh, all the different things. We have a color challenge, which I'm going to use uh, when I'm doing my next tree marker challenge. I'm going to use this. Uh, we have a c character challenge and a an environment challenge, an incremental challenge, I believe it's pronounced, uh, which you draw in st stages. We have a scribble challenge, a cup challenge, design mix, and a custom generator. Uh, all of uh, these with the uh, green wheels behind them, you can choose other options. But for this one, I'm going to do the design mix, uh, which uh, have two pictures of different things and you're going to combine them into one. I think that's a, some, a good way to start and uh, gives me a little bit of freedom. So that's what we're using. So let's pick the design mix and go. And we're getting, hmm, <laughs> one of those pocket knives and a rubber boat thing. <laughs> so let's see if we can make something with this. It could be fun. Yeah, let's start thumbnailing. So I've done a few thumbnails now, combining these two things. But I'm not sure how you're supposed to do this, because it do clearly says that I combine the two things below into one thing um, and in my mind I thought that combining them in one picture uh, was the thing that you were supposed to do but maybe I'm supposed to combine them into one creature person or something and uh, I can't think of anything uh, but I've sketched uh, some thumbnails, as you can see. Uh, I actually started off 
uh, on this paper. Uh, I had uh, some ideas. Um, I was ha going to have the mermaid having the pocket knife trying to put some holes in the, that boat, uh, but yeah. And then I did uh, kind of like this, which turned into that, but um, yeah, I don't really know how I the pocket knife would play in. It seems a little bit silly, so then I thought maybe uh, the mer mermaid had been caught in a fisherman's nets and the fisherman is uh, cutting her out and um, yeah and this is a alteration of that one mm, but instead the mermaid is free but uh, and I'm not entirely sure about the character in the boat but I quite like this uh, and I kind of want to go forward with it even though it's not yeah <laughs> what I'm supposed to do uh, I guess uh, but I in I'm going to interpret 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 this challenge in that I'm going to combine the two things into one picture not one thing I kind of want the person in the boat to be a little girl because that way it could be a little bit more playful but if I'm going on that route I actually don't think the pocket knife would make sense uh, not very much at least uh, it kind of putting a knife in a young girl's hand is maybe not the smartest idea but then again, if I go with this one, then it kind of, yeah, uh, the thought was that maybe she was entangled in something and he's helping her by um, giving her the knife. I don't know if I could, yeah, I don't know. But at the same time, I do kind of want to go with this one because that, that is the one that give, is right now the giving me the um, kind of inspiration so I'm going to try and sketch it out on a larger paper and uh, see if I can keep the momentum of the thumbnail and uh, yeah let's see what we can kind of fix and add to and so on so yeah uh, the challenge was to combine two things into one and we got those things and uh, I'm going to instead of just having them in one thing it's in the picture itself so I hope that's okay and uh, yeah let's start sketching so I continued on sketching this on a A4 paper and it's actually the first time since I did my previous cheap art supply challenge earlier this year that I've worked this big. I tend to work either A5 at most or most commonly uh, the ACO size. But yeah, it was fun and I definitely would like to start making larger pieces of art. I think I, I prefer ACO sizes because it, they are pretty quick to do. And by quick, I mean, uh, well, one to two hours. So it feels nice when you have a very limited time to actually finish something, so yeah. And as you can see, I decided to go with a girl. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty happy with that decision. And the pocket knife does kind of get lost a little bit. The mermaid is holding it. But yeah, it's it's there, but it's one of those things that I wish that I had been able to do a little bit more on. But yeah, overall I'm happy with how it turned out. So uh, I, I don't know how much to speed this up, so it's going to be quite a long video. Because at the moment every clip is sped up by 2500 
present so it's pretty quick I could speed it up even more or take out some things but at the same time I don't because it took a long time not only because it was bigger but because I, I'm not used to working with these pens so there's a le learning curve and I'm not sure if I got the hang of it all that well but I did give it my best shot and um, and it was kind of fun and so surprisingly it worked pretty well. I was very skeptical of using the uh, fiber pens on the paper because I know that they have a tendency to chew up the paper and if you layer on too many layers but I discovered a trick to kind of make it a little bit easier. If you lay down a coat with um, colored pencils first, uh, it's much easier to both get a sort of a softer blend with the fiber pens as well as not chewing through the paper. So it actually didn't bleed through uh, very much. So I'm pretty happy with that. But because I used the uh, colored pencils underneath, uh, the pens, uh, some of the pens actually clogged up a little bit, but it wasn't all that bad and um, I could use them still, so that is something that you could consider if you're going to use that technique. But yeah, overall it worked pretty well. And I did look up reference and I was going to put even more uh, details in it but because I knew that it was going to be quite difficult anyway to get a smooth gradient and it was going to be difficult to get precise lines in the way that I wanted it so I, I kind of looked at reference but I went my own way and I, I think I'm mostly, I'm thinking more of the lines that I wanted to feel right and uh, especially on the lily pads, yeah, because I couldn't get the... <laughs> it, it was difficult, uh, yeah, so I ended up not uh, being very particular and I, at some points I'm pretty sloppy, but I'm more it feels, it looks alright from afar, it's when you get too uh, up close that it kind of looks uh, a little bit uh, sloppy and weird. Uh, and when it came to doing the underwater scene, it uh, was also a little bit difficult because I had something else in mind, but as I discovered it was very difficult to get a smooth gradient line. So instead I decided to actually work with the brush strokes, as the best of my knowledge at least. I didn't do very much cross hatching, but there's a little bit of it, uh, or stippling. There's also some of that when we come to the mermaid and the fish. But as I said, I wanted more the feel of the piece to be feel right. <laughs> I don't know. So, and because the... Uh, surface of the pond is more horizontal. I wanted to separate the top and the bottom by having more vertical lines in the underwater scene. And we also have that blue where the surface says meat, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, then I had a little bit of a hard time deciding what color scheme I wanted for the fish and the mermaid. I, I knew that I wanted her hair to be uh, orange as well, because the a rubber boat is. And uh, that's a good way to kind of get things together. Maybe I should have had some more purples under the sea, but it didn't feel like I... I, don't, I didn't know where to put it. Uh, I did add a um, lot of purples in the shadows. Uh, of all over the place just to get that coherent look. So the fish is actually inspired by brass, uh, the fish sort thing, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so that's where I got the inspiration for the colors. 
and uh, the markings and all that. And I, I also went back after I finished all, with all the fiber pens and the color pencil with a little bit of watercolors, which I ended up using. I didn't mention that before, but I used the watercolors on the uh, far back of the picture just to get that more soft look because it, it is very difficult to get a soft look with uh, fiber pens. Uh, so that's why I ended up using a little bit of watercolors all over. In my mind I was going to have maybe used that a little bit more, but since I'm using computer paper it buckles very easily and uh, you can't put too many layers on it or the paper uh, yeah, get too much damage so that you don't you can't work on it anymore. Yeah, so that's why I used a little bit of watercolors, uh, and I did try to use the uh, crayons as well. So, but um, yeah, it, it didn't really give the effect that I wanted, but I did use it on a few places. And I must say that my hands really itched to <laughs> do some kind of highlights, uh, but uh, I, I thought that uh, for this one I'm not going to use that. Uh, because uh, that was not in the supplies that I showed in the beginning, uh, but I could have used a little bit of either gouache paints that I have of the white one, or even the uh, gel pens, because they are not the most cheap things, but there's no real alternative for them, if that makes sense. Uh, so I don't think that it would have been cheating in that sense because I can't find any cheaper kinds of that gel pen. I have used some cheaper brands before but I couldn't find any when I was looking for cheap art supplies so... Or I could have used, and that's a possibility for you, to get grab those um, sample paints that you can get in the paint store. I think most can supply with those if you get more of those all around paints, acrylic type. And I was very close to bringing up my acrylic paints, but I stopped myself because <laughs> I thought that, yeah, no, you're going to play by the rules. So, no, no paints for you. But yeah, uh, you could get away with doing highlights in a piece like this. I mean, if you're doing this uh, and you only have these type of things, use whatever you have to make a uh, painting. It doesn't really matter what you use. You get to practice and you get to uh, play around with new materials that you might not use otherwise. So I think that is the main goal of using cheap art supplies, is to show that you don't need the most fancy thing to get a nice looking result. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. So it was a lot of fun and I probably forgot to mention a lot of things as I normally do. And hopefully I will have new exciting, exciting content. Next week though, uh, I think there will be just another ACO video that I've made beforehand. Um, just having the commentary left to do, do on that one, but there might be a possibility that I'm going to do a challenge video with my friend and my sister, so that's maybe a thing, hopefully, if we can get that set up alright. And uh, yeah, so I hope I remembered to say everything about the painting itself. I kind of want to do this again, this painting again, but digitally, because I, I kind of want to get back into that, uh, but no promises made, no promises broken. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, that's something I kind of want to revisit this again, um, kind of flesh it out a little bit more. And uh, yeah, so I'm sorry for the long video, I just didn't know how much sped, sped up you wanted it to be. So if you want to see my previous cheap art supply challenge, there will be a link in the description. So 
check that out. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hey, though.